Welcome to the Terrible Podcast with your host from SteelersDepot.com, where you can find all your latest and greatest Steelers news. It's Dave Bryan and Alex Cazorra, always lit, talking Steelers. And now, here's Dave and Alex. Welcome to the Terrible Podcast, Season 11, Episode 90. He's Dave Brian. I'm Alex Kazor, SteelersDepot.com. Glad to be back with you guys for this Wednesday show. And I know we just did a show yesterday, Dave, but it already feels like that was a month ago based on all the news that has happened over the last 24 hours. So we figured it was best for us to do a show today as well, not wait till Friday because there is just so much news to cover. Happy St. Patrick's Day. Uh, happy <laughs> uh, Happy New Year. Uh, league League Year begins right. at 4 o'clock uh, p.m. Uh, today. Uh, happy uh, uh, Spring Forward. Uh, what, what, what other happy is it? Happy uh, Happy, uh, happy Wednesday. day to be Zach Banner. Yeah. Day to ha- be Zach happy Banner. day to be Zach Banner. Happy Wednesday. How about that? Uh, glad, glad everybody's uh, tuning in again with us today. Absolutely. All right, Dave. So basically four main players to discuss today. we got Zach Banner, Vince Williams, Tyson Oluwalu, and Mike Hilton. I'll let this, uh, I'll leave it up to you, Dave. Who do you want to start with talking about? Uh, let's pay uh, some respects uh, first to uh, a guy that, uh, you know, and I thought you did a good job on the site this morning, uh, you know, sending out kind of an, an open kind of uh, public uh, thank you letter to one Vince Williams. Uh I wasn't surprised it happened. We had, you know, we've talked for how long now that, I mean, mm-hmm. going back even into, I think uh, the end of last year of how it was quite uh, plausible that if there was going to be a salary cap casualty uh, this year uh, and, and specifically ahead of the start of the new league year, it was going to be Vince Williams. Uh, it wasn't surprising. Uh, the writing got uh, the, the, the last few days, the writing became uh, on the wall became clearer and clearer. I hope nobody who listens to this show or, re- or reads the uh, 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 the site was surprised by it. But nonetheless, and this was my terrible take uh, yesterday, Alex, and kind of put together last minute because of the timing of it and all, and when we kind of like to release these things in the afternoon. But I, you know, I, I, the 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 overall timing. Look, we we knew it was coming, but my consternation with it all and. You know, maybe it's a little bit of a fanboy in me as well, too, was the fact that I knew he was going. You knew he was going. Art Reed II mm-hmm. knew he was going. Uh, 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 Kevin Colbert knew he was going. Mike Tomlin knew he was going. Why, why Why? do you have to wait so long to turn him loose like that? You know, g- give me a good reason uh, as to why. You know, and look, I'm sure uh, Vince probably, it sounds like Vince knew a couple of days ago that mm-hmm. he was going to be out the door. Maybe at that time he got permission, uh, for, uh, you know, his agent probably got permission to, 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 to start checking around. But that that's beside the point. You let a guy go a little bit earlier there, maybe teams uh, can, 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 can wedge him in and all like that. So. I think this guy was a qu- and, and I think you summed it up the best. Uh, really, a kind of an, uh, an, an old school, quintessential stealer, so to speak. I mean, man, I can remember like yesterday that uh, uh, that Senior Bowl practice and and and, mm-hmm. and 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 that hit that he made that they showed on the NFL Network, and that's what put him on my on my radar right 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 then and there, you know. And, and I think I put him in some mock drafts or one mock draft that that year and all. Uh, this guy never gave the Steelers any problems smart as smart could be boy even if you go back to his rookie season there he got thrust into the limelight because of I think some you know what some injuries or what Larry Foote yeah there was a bicep uh, right, and and had to play right out of the shoot. I mean, back in the day, this guy was a uh, you know vicious special teamer as well, cut his teeth that way. Mm-hmm. And you want to talk about a guy good against the run, and a guy that wanted to, had no problem doing the dirty work, and a guy that even last year I think second on the team in tackles for loss behind one one T.J. Watt. So, uh, you know, we, once again, we knew it was coming. You know, I don't have an issue with that. Uh, it, it's just kind of <laughs> why couldn't they get giving that guy mm-hmm. a little bit of a you know, heads up and, and put him out on the street a little bit quicker there. Your thoughts. 
Right. No, I, I echo basically all of those sentiments. It, it, it seems like the Steelers wanted to wait until the Zach Banner deal was done, considering that ended up being more money than I think either of us anticipated. We'll talk about it in a moment. Um, and so once that deal was done and they were basically right up against the cap, then they released Vince Williams. So that seems to be the, the reason for the delay and why it happened uh, yesterday. But but yeah, I'm with you. You know, it's no secret that Williams has been one of my favorite players to watch over the last, you know, seven, eight years. And I mean, just you know, because everyone thinks that Vince is this giant big dude. I mean, he was six foot two thirty three, ran in the high four sevens, and stuck in the league for eight years and counting. That's pretty remarkable. Any six round pick to stick for eight seasons is, is really impressive. And a guy that wasn't the most athletically gifted, um, he got by on that physicality, on the effort, and that great football IQ that you mentioned. So uh, hopefully he'll land on his feet, find a new home sooner than later. I think he will. But um, yeah, just the guy that. Could have played in any era and, and, and probably was better suited for an era un, unlike this one um, because, you know, that old school mentality would have probably fit him better in the 90s and 80s than than it would today. But uh, I think had there not been, you know, the, the cap crunch and the pandemic, et cetera, Vince would still be a stealer, which makes this release all the more painful because it's not like you wanted to do it. You just this is a case where you felt like you had to do it. Yeah, it, it, you know, it, it's a casualty, literally. You know, it, right. I, right. I I think you could call him a salary cap casualty for for sure here. But once again, you know, the the, the, the writing has been uh, on, on the wall with this. How many guys going back to the entire 2013 class as mm. a whole draft class have played in more games than Vince Williams? It, from, I can look that up from that class question. and class alone. There's probably only about 20. I, I would venture to say probably no more than I'm sure there are there. The list is, is at least a dozen long. I, I, I would venture to say that the list is probably 20 long, but uh, I, I would venture to say probably not many more than 20 to 30 who have played in more games from that entire 2013 draft class. Yeah, let me go ahead and try to look that up here because um, I was looking up something similar yesterday on Tyson Aluwalu. Uh, just give me one second right. here. But, yeah, I mean, it, there's not there's not many guys for sure. I'll um, talk about the cap specifics here related okay. to it. Uh, Vince Williams was scheduled to earn $4 million in 2021. Uh, those, I, I, we probably got some junior capologists after listening to this <laughs> show uh, 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 you know, f- for all this time that can probably recite what the uh, cap savings minus the roster displacement was. Uh, it's $3.34 million to be specific there. So once, uh, uh, once, that's, uh, once that's processed and that has not yet hit the NFLPA site, it should uh, fairly soon here, but uh, a, a total net savings of three point three four uh, million, uh, and yeah, that includes also you know you throw on the fact that he's got three point oh three one six six eight in you know a dead money charge that goes over to the dead money uh, 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 column over there uh, on top of it there. But uh, uh, I mean, the, you, you said it. I mean, a guy. To, to play that many years for kind of his his athleticism and, and, and this far along into today's NFL where, where athletic, athleticism, especially at his position, sideline to sideline uh, play is is key. I think it's a testament to the kind of guy he is. I mean, just go back to last year. So I think one of the clips that you posted, boy, you, you better be lined up in the right spot, you know, uh, mm-hmm. if, if not, or else you're going to get your butt, you know, spanked literally and uh we've seen uh vince williams kind of set the set that defense over the years uh played a huge role in 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 devin bush's development hopefully devin bush learned a lot from him here uh in 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 these last couple of years Uh, vince williams tied for the 10th most games played of the 2013 draft class Uh, that's gotta that's gotta be wrong no i that that, that, i uh, uh is there a next page category or whatnot? Why well, you don't believe that he's the tenth uh, most games played of the of the entire 2013 class? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, yeah, he's that, got. I, I think he's, he's a, lower than that. Well, I can, I'll double check here in a second. He's at 121. The leaders, Deron Harmon and Quido Patterson, at 127. Uh, let me check here and make sure this is this is accurate. But but, but uh, when you when you sort those, does it sort by does it pull up the next? Because I mean you're you're probably trying to pull up the entire draft class there. If you went next page over, uh, no, at, I, I sorted it by games. So it, it right right. But when you sort it by thing. games, go, go click next page at the bottom. I know. I, I did. It it sorted correctly. 
Okay, so you're you're telling me there's only ten more players that. Uh... Yeah. Yep. I can read the, the list if you want me to, to pull up okay. the. Okay. Uh, I mean, the, I, I, the, I, 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 I'm surprised by that, but uh, I would have thought of that that number a little bit higher. But I mean, even so, it's a testament to. I mean, how he ranks in that class, right? Right. Uh, yeah, I mean, he's been durable, and he was playing. Like, by week two, he was starting after foot got hurt. So, he, I mean, he's just been available. Now, he hasn't started all these games by starts. It's, he's, he comes in probably much lower, but uh, he comes in in like the, the 30-something range. But just in terms of games played, he's played obviously a lot of football. And that and that's just a 2013 class, right? Yes, just the 2013 right. class. That, that, I, I would have thought he would have been a little bit lower than that. So that's even better than what I thought it would have been with him. So Yeah. Yeah, so hopefully, I know in his tweet after was, you know, who needs a goon? And that's that's this classic Vince Williams right there. And uh, someone will need a goon. What if he goes to Houston's been signing everybody and they just traded away McKinney, kind of the thumping linebacker in a, in a similar mold as Vince Williams. Maybe the dude goes to Houston. I don't know. Uh, Detroit also maybe another fit. Yeah. Yeah, I think Dan Campbell would like a guy like Vince Williams in his locker room. Right. Uh, he, I think he'll he, – here's something else that, that I've kind of wondered about too. And we've, we've talked about – I wonder if they went to him, at least asked him – if he would have have taken a pay cut. You think they did? I'm not sure. Maybe. But I I know Vince is a pretty prideful guy, so I don't think he would have accepted it. Obviously, if he was offered, he did not accept it, considering he was released. But uh, maybe we'll find out someday. Uh, Because, look, you would have saved, uh, let's say, you did save $3.34 million in cap space by cutting him loose. But if you took him down to the $1.075 million, you, you're almost there. It's like two point nine something, I guess, million that, that that you would say that way. Surely he would be worth, you know, less than a half a million to retain. You know, mm-hmm. uh, difference. I don't know. May, 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 maybe not. But uh, anyway, uh, yeah, he's gone now. So uh, nice piece that you uh, wrote wrote on uh, Cedars Depot uh, this morning, and you know, uh, he, like you said, he you know. Probably not going to go into the ring of honor or anything like that, but uh, I, I don't think we'll we'll soon uh, uh, forget some of his contributions as a member of the Steelers. Definitely. Last quirky stat on Vince Williams, one of just eight Steelers six-round picks in team history to play at least 100 games for the Pittsburgh Steelers. One of just eight. So it's uh, he's, he's, he's in pretty good company with wow. Tom Chilkin and Brian Hinkle, AB, et cetera. Wow. All right, Dave, so what do you want to go to next? We cross Vince off the list. We got uh, – let's talk about Zach Banner last in terms of re-signings. Let's talk about guys who went somewhere else and one that was wholly expected, Mike Hilton, now officially a member, at least will be by 4 o'clock, of the Cincinnati Bengals. He signs a four-year, $24 million contract with Cincinnati, a little bit lighter than what I thought, but still a well-deserved payday for Mike Hilton. Yeah, that's one of the little surprises so far as far as things that have happened with the Steelers and, and, and players signing the contracts. Obviously, I thought Vince was gone. I think you thought Vince was – I mean, uh, Vince. Mike Hilton was – you got me thinking about Vince now. Uh, <laughs> Mike Hilton, you know, obviously I think we both thought that Mike Hilton was going to be out the door, really nothing. Uh, I, I, I didn't think that the Steelers re- – I mean, th- could they have afforded – Here's the bad thing about this. When you see the contract that he signed and you see the average yearly value of coming in at $6 million, which is about, I mean, I had him pegged probably between seven and a half and $9 million as being his market value. Uh, when you see a guy come in, you know, at $6 million like him, you make it makes you wonder, man. Is there are you, are we sure that they couldn't have done anything uh, to uh, uh, to to get him signed? Now here, the the specifics of his contract now are are a little bit different. So the Steelers would have had to done something a little bit different there because the the, the Bengals only gave him a four million dollars signing bonus. They did give him two million dollars base salary in 2021. They did give him a two million dollar roster bonus in in in, in 2021. 21 and he has per game roster bonuses that he can earn up to half a million dollars there. So, uh, he, his cap number comes in at 5.375 million. Now, obviously the Steelers could, you know, even on, even if they would have paid him 8 million, you know, uh, per, per, per year, they, there's no trying to stomach that kind of cap number would have been tough for them. They would have had to put, you know, a, a, a bigger chunk of things probably in the signing bonus, obviously a less, uh, uh, a, a less base salary. The Steelers don't like to do the per game roster bonuses and, and, and those kind of things either. If they can, uh, uh get away with it there. But, uh, uh, 
you know, I think when you just look at the overall value at six million dollars, and that's the way the player should be judged is, is, is his yearly value. For him to come in that kind of lot, that that low makes you kind of wonder, man, are, are we sure that there's something that he mm-hmm. couldn't have done mm-hmm. to to uh, to re- re- retain him? You get what I'm saying? All right. What's the difference in cap charge between Sutton and Hilton? Because you're right, Hilton's contract has a little more upfront than what they did with Sutton. Oh man, uh, Sutton's is like two point. Uh, what was it? Uh, I'll have to. Two point nine. Uh, hold on a minute here, and I'll give you the specifics on Sutton's n- uh, number here. And then just to compare that with Hilton, because right, it doesn't seem like much four and a half for Sutton, six for for Hilton. That's a pretty small difference. But when you look at the way the contracts are structured, it the the, the difference gets a little bit more pronounced. Uh, two point seven five million cap charge on on uh, on on Sutton. But once again, okay. we're we're only talking about a two year deal on that one too. So right. But and then for Hilton, rough math would be what's the cap charge on that? Five. You said five. Uh, five point three seven five million. Yeah, so, you know, what is that, two and a half, almost three million more, which is a pretty big difference where the Steelers are at. Right. Now, once again, could you have rest- you know, could you have given Mike sure. Hilton a four-year deal at $6 million average and structured a little bit different where that cap number is a lot less than 5.375? Yeah, absolutely you could have. Uh, but... Uh, and look, I mean, you could get you could get get creative as you want. The, the Steelers, though, you know, they they they, they go by them. You know, it, it's all about that first year guaranteed money. And until they start stru- structuring, we've had this conversation how many times? Mm-hmm. Until they start structuring non quarterback contracts a little bit differently when it comes to guaranteed money, then then you know there are going to be certain aspects where they're not going to be players and and certain things regardless kind of of what maybe they can get a player uh signed for there so uh yeah look and mike brown's as cheap as they come right but uh (laughs) here's the thing they 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 were able to structure this thing where they could absorb that first year cap hit because uh all all said and done i mean mike Mike hilton's walking away with this thing with like what eight point Five uh, a million in 2021, and I kind of envisioned Mike Hilton getting 10 million in 2021 uh, uh, as part of him getting probably an average yearly value of eight million. So they're giving him a you know pretty nice chunk of change, 8.5 million of the uh, uh, of the 24 million uh, 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 up front. But it, but here's here and and here's the thing too with the uh, with the Bengals is you know technically. You know they could they could walk away from this contract from uh, uh, of Mike Hilton after 2021 if they really wanted to. I mean there'll be three million dollars in dead money uh, uh, out there overall. But I mean uh, technically they they could probably walk away from Mike Hilton after one year and basically it being a a what a one year eight point five million dollar contract. Mm. Yeah, I mean, obviously, I'm very happy for Hilton. I'm glad he got paid. It's long overdue. I think he was the one free agent Pittsburgh had where I'm not sure if he's going to be used as effectively and efficiently outside of Pittsburgh than he was with the Steelers. I mean, if you're the Bengals, you have to be committed to using his strengths in a pretty unique way because his skill set's pretty, you know, uncommon for a slot cornerback. You better be uh, willing and able to blitz and send him in, in, in the run and play some sub against heavier personnel and just utilize. Uh, his strengths. And so I wonder how well that'll translate outside of Pittsburgh. I think he's the one guy that was this perfect scheme fit for Keith Butler and Mike Tomlin, what the Steelers identity was. And I wonder if that'll be as evident outside of Pittsburgh. Right. Uh, good point. Uh, let, 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 let me, uh, let me, and look, I, I, nobody deserved to get paid more than Mike Hilton, mm-hmm. right? So uh, hopefully people aren't being too nasty on him. You obviously, you didn't want to see him go to the, uh, the, you know, stay in the division to the Bengals. Mm-hmm. And, and so you have to root against him that, that kind of way there. But, uh, uh, let, let me ask you just point, point blank. And I hate to get too, too deep into, you know, uh, judging guys' futures, especially uh, uh, when they lead the Steelers here. In 2023, is Mike Hilton mm. going to be a member on the 53-man roster of the Cincinnati Bengals in week one of 2023? Man, why you get asked the hard hitting questions at ten thirty? Are you these Oprah? Are, kind of the are you Oprah, silly, Dave? I, these are the silly things that go through my head. Mm-hmm. I, I don't know why. Maybe it's because I just look at the contracts way too much and all like that. But these are the silly things that 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 run through my <laughs> head. Uh, 
I, 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 I don't think he will be. It, it wouldn't shock me if he wasn't just because, like I said, I don't know if he's going to be used the same way. I mean, I, I hope that the, that he is. If you sign the guy, you better be using him in the way that, that, that reflects his ability. But he'd be the one guy where I wouldn't be shocked where if it doesn't work out just because, you know, defensive coordinators don't want to blitz their slot corner as much as, as Hilton is capable and able to blitz. I mean, so technically the we, we could be looking at uh, uh, Mike Hilton earning, let's see, eight and a half and what's eight and a half and – Another four, twelve and a half million dollars is is probably about his max earnings o- over uh, uh, over the next two years. And, and look, I hope he gets it. I hope, you know, hope he's able to stick mm-hmm. it all. But when you get into 2023, I kind of wonder if Mike Hilton might be uh, back, you know, back trying to get one more bite of the apple in 2023. So as soon as Sutton's deal is up, they'll just go resign or go sign back Mike Hilton. Is that hey. what you're telling me? Hey. Yeah, there hey. you go. Don't, you heard don't, it here don't, first. Don't, don't knock it. All right, Dave, the one player who left the Steelers yesterday that I think came as a pretty big surprise to both of us, really the first major surprise of Steelers for agency, is Tyson Aluwalu, who signed a two-year, $6 million deal to go back to where it started for him, the Jacksonville Jaguars, and that one I did not see coming, and that one kind of felt like the biggest gut punch of them all so far. Boy, if you could have won some money off of me this offseason, that, mm-hmm. that, that's right there how, how you would have probably done it uh, uh, more likely. I would have... I would have uh, I would have bet you some pretty good money uh, guaranteeing you that that uh, Tyson Alualu would have been back on that uh, on that you know on that qualifying uh, veteran contract that I uh, wrote about. Boy, I was so proud of that uh, that post, <laughs> uh, uh, and I wrote it months ago, right? And uh, I was thinking, boy, I can't wait to bump this one back up there because this is the absolute perfect way you can pay a guy like Tyson Alualu. Uh, he undoubtedly guaranteed wants to finish his career in Pittsburgh one more year. He deserves it. The Steelers need him back. This makes too much sense for him not to come back that way. And bam, Tyson Alualu, two years, uh, what was the number? Uh, six, million, six. Uh, six million dollars with the Jacksonville Jaguars. And uh, I was I was quite shocked. I was too. Now, we don't know why players leave. Was it that he just didn't want to be in Pittsburgh anymore? He still had an affinity for Jacksonville. He had lived there for, what, the first seven years of his NFL <laughs> career. No, I don't know why, but go go ahead. I, hey, any of you that listen to have been to Jacksonville, it ain't all that, but mm. go ahead. Shots fired. Well, I, I joked that he saw this winter Pittsburgh had and said, I am going somewhere warm. Get me out of these Pittsburgh winters. Um, we don't know exactly the reason why. Maybe he just didn't want to play no stackle anymore. I, I, I don't know. But I'll say this, Dave. If the reason why Tyson Alualu left the Steelers was financial, where the Steelers weren't willing to pay the money he got, which was not a lot of money, I don't know how you can be the Steelers and on one hand say, we're competing for a Super Bowl. We're not rebuilding. We're trying to win a seventh Lombardi this year. And also, on the other hand, say, well, we can't pay Tyson Alualu you know, that kind of money. I mean, you can't be both of those things. You're in one camp or the other. Either you're going to make a serious run and you're going to spend to get those key, you know, niche pieces to your defense, especially when you're getting gutted otherwise, or you're just saying we're not going to win this year. Uh, basically, I, I, look, I, I'm not going to argue with you on that one. Uh, uh, I, I, I'm, I'm just not going to argue with you because uh, they gave him a two. Uh, it looks like a what a 2.4 million dollar I think signing bonus on that and a minimum base salary of 1.075. So what's uh, what's uh, 2.4 plus another million? Uh, well, actually, and he got a $25,000 workout bonus, which is really insignificant. So it comes out to 1.1 plus 2.4. So they gave him $3.5 million. It's, it's essentially a, you know, you, you got to look at it as a one year, $3.5 million deal. Cause you almost, mm-hmm. you know, will he, will he be around in 2022? We'll see. Uh, you couldn't make that work somehow. You know, right. uh, his cap charge. And, and, and you know, once again, you can't I don't think you can judge players by cap charges. But even his cap charge with the uh, with with the Jaguars is two point three million. Uh, I mean, if we're splitting hairs like that. I mean, uh, well, I, yeah, I think you're right from the aspect of look, we, we knew things were going to be tight. We knew, you know, mm-hmm. certain players probably not going to uh, not going to be able to re- re- be retained. So, so you know, uh, 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 others, maybe you were for him to. That guy played out of his mind the last two years, and I, I wanted at least eight more games of it. 
you know, mm-hmm. and I think right. the Steelers needed at least eight, eight or nine more games of it as well, too. So I was shocked, Alex, and uh, kudos to Tyson Alualu, and uh, I'm not not soon going to forget the, the last couple of years he spent with the Steelers. Yeah, last two have been fantastic for him because whenever he first came over, the first couple of years or first two years, really, they were OK. I mean, they were fine, but they, yeah, he just kind of found his fountain of youth in 2019 and then definitely last year in 2020. So I understand that the contract he got and the cap charge that comes along with it was probably a little bit more than what you laid out and what would be ideal. But, man, if you can't afford for that extra million dollars or so, then you're just not a serious Super Bowl contending team if you're just if that if that's where you draw the line. So um, I understand it's nose tackle. It's not a position that's playing 90 percent of the time. You know, you'll find a replacement. I know I was freaking out a year ago. How are they going to replace Javon Hargrave when they, they did that you know, pretty adequately with with Tyson Alualu? But uh, you play in the AFC North with Baltimore and Cleveland, two of the best rushing offenses in football. You better stop the run to win the AFC North. And now they have a big hole in the middle of their defense trying to you know replace Tyson Alualu without you know, great in-house option. Carlos Davis, potentially, but dude's played 50 snaps in his career. Don't know a ton about him. So there's a another need to be filled. He's a guy, the last two times he's been up for unrestricted free agents, I've whiffed on him both times. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, because last time it was, it was prior to his previous two years, and I thought... Mm-hmm. I thought, nah, man, you know, hey, and let's be honest, his, 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 his uh, the first couple of years in Pittsburgh, as you said, I mean, it was okay, but I mean, it, it wasn't something where you're, 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 you're clamoring to get him re-signed, I didn't think. Mm-hmm. And, but boy, after he, after he re-signed that, 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 that last time, I mean, just out of his mind, uh, uh, good. I mean, it, it, fountain of youth kind of, kind of stuff those last couple years. And then that, that's why this time around I thought, oh man, you got to get that guy back this time. And. <laughs> they, 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 they didn't. So, uh, I'm Oh, for two on Tyson Alu Alu, but, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, wh- all right, what's going to happen moving forward with this team now? Does uh, does defensive tackle become a I – mean, you just spent a, what, a seventh-round uh, draft pick uh, last year. Now, I, I do think a lot of people probably don't even remember that the team drafted Carlos Davis mm-hmm. last year, and I and I don't think a lot of people uh, 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 really know that uh, he wasn't – you know, saying someone isn't bad isn't 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 is isn't a full rubber stamping at all. But I mean, he he played a limited amount of snaps, and it's not a lot a lot to judge him off of right now. But I thought he wasn't bad overall, and you know, it, yeah, but it's it, such a small sample size. It's that, and that's what snaps. I'm saying. Yeah, I mean, it, there's not a lot to go off of there. But at least what what little's out there really was positive overall. I thought. Now, mm-hmm. you know, what do you do? I, I tell you what, Isaiah Bugs is not the answer there. I don't think. Yeah, I've seen some people suggest that. The dude's talented, but he's just never earned the trust of the coaching staff. He's had weight issues. He's had mental assignment, you know, mental mistakes and assignment issues. And, and it's hard to trust that guy in the middle of your, of your defense. And, 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 and God bless Henry Mondo. I, I, I don't, you know, he's nothing more than, than a backup, you know, at, at, at best when it comes to there. So, you know, is this, is this team going to have to look at another later round uh, defensive tackle? Maybe. Or you go out there and just sign some low-level veteran guy, which is kind of my ideal situation instead of burning the draft pick on it. But, um, you know, he said a Danny Shelton. He had a failed physical, you said, right? Yeah, he had a failed physical. Yeah. He was the first day. As soon as they dropped him, I, I thought that would be a good fit until uh, until the uh, NFL transaction wire updated later in the day. It said a failed physical. Now, he's had his issues everywhere he's gone, I think, a little bit there. But, mm-hmm. uh Kevin Colbert does like that pedigree, right? And uh, he's got it. And I, I, we don't know what the failed physical was for. Is it weight or 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 or, or, or what? But uh, mm. it would make sense for for Kevin Colbert to throw a minimum salary benefit contract at somebody uh, that that can play in the in, in in the middle there, right? How about Steve McClendon? Bring him back. You know, I you ain't got to twist my arm <laughs> on that, but I got a feeling that they value him still. I. I yeah, he seems like he'd be a Bruce Arians guy, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, so we'll, we'll sit and wait. I mean, they don't have a lot of money to spend. Look, could, you could give the same contract you were going to give to Tyson Otawalu to Steve McClendon, right? You could. And give him the two point whatever something million and and drive his cap charge down. Uh, the problem is. Uh, I don't. I don't know because of the co- contract. I, I don't know the stipulation of the timing. If, if Tampa could give him the same thing, uh, he might just be more apt to just stay in Tampa if he can get the same kind of money. So they would probably kind of have to blow his doors off a little bit uh, to uh, 
uh, uh, to get him back. And, 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 and right now the Steelers are in no position to blow anybody's doors off right now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I was just I was compiling the snap count loss of just 2020 yesterday of Vince Williams, Bud Dupree, Mike Hilton, Tyson Alu. When some of those guys got hurt, obviously Dupree got hurt. Uh, Alu Alu missed, missed the game with that MCL sprain. They were losing over almost 2,200 snaps in the last 24 hours just on defense, just from last year. So it's a lot of snaps to fill without a ton of draft capital and without really any money to do it. That is a pretty monumental task. Yeah, uh, absolutely. Look, and we haven't really talked about all of them yet, but if you look at the uh, you know, Vince Williams out the door, uh, Tyson Alualu out the door, and, uh, and, and, and and Mike Hilton out the door, that's a quarter of the tackles for losses that the Steelers mm-hmm. registered last year during the regular season. Something like 28 of, uh, I don't know, what, 103 or something like that. That's a lot, that's a lot of tackles yeah. for losses there. Yeah, it, it's not that any – one of those guys are irreplaceable. They're not. Even someone like Vince, who you guys know I'm a, I'm a huge fan of, he's not irreplaceable. They'll replace Vince Williams. They'll probably do it just with Robert Spillane. But when the combination of, of just all those hits coming at once um, and expecting to be able to replace those guys seamlessly, immediately, just is unlikely to happen. So one guy you can stomach. It's like the injuries last year on the defense. You lose Devin Bush, okay, you can stomach that. But the combination of you lose Devin Bush, but Dupree, other guys get hurt. You know, Tyson Hollywell is playing on one leg, essentially. That adds up over time, and that's what we're seeing right now with the Steelers. You know, individually, yeah. I mean, look, uh, yeah, but, I mean, everybody should have been prepared for Vince anyway, right? I mean, it doesn't make it any easier. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, and, and his play against the run is, is the thing that you're going to miss the most uh, with that. Uh, there, Mike Hilton for this for the same matter. Really, it, it this All is this is more about how are you going to be able to and and there were times last year where 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 uh, uh, the warts popped up and they got big against well really the last two years against the run right yeah you know and uh, you, you're losing Dupree too right pretty damn good against mm-hmm. the run so. You know, that that's to me is the collective biggest. It's not so much an individual by player concern. And I, I think mm-hmm. that's kind of what you're saying there. It's more right. of a collective man. Uh, and we've talked about, too, us thinking that this defense was going to go backwards in some form, shape or form. Right. I mean, mm-hmm. from the last two years. And I think we're starting to see what one area where that might might be. Right. Yeah. I mean, th- they'll still be a good defense. They right. still have the core guys in place, but you're losing some of your better run defenders. And if you can't stop the run, I mean, that is the the bedrock of the Steelers defense always has been stopping the run. And again, you play. It's not like you're playing the Chiefs and you're in, in the AFC West. You're playing Baltimore and Cleveland, even the Bengals to a lesser extent. All teams that want to run the football and the, and the Browns and the Ravens in particular run the ball extremely effectively and ran all over you last season, the Browns in, in, in particular. So um, if you can't stop the run, then your pass rush doesn't get home. You can't put teams in third and long, and you can't create the splash plays the pressure presents. So um, that that is a a big loss the Steelers have to to reckon with right now. All four of those guys, right? So uh, to go back to Vince here just briefly in terms of his replacement, because we should touch on that more than we did. Robert Splane should step into that role in terms of depth. You got UG three, Marcus Allen, and then probably a day three draft pick, unless you want to swing for the fences and go with a, a Zayvon Collins or a Micah Parsons if he falls. At number 24, I'm not going to say that's impossible. I just put that as pretty unlikely right now. Uh, especially with the whole uh, – look, we've talked about Zavin already quite a bit. Uh, Planet Theory type guy, he's impressive on tape, but non-power five. And you would think – I mean, is he a kind of – but you know, you would think with his athleticism and his sparkiness that he wouldn't be a guy that would fall to 55. Mm-hmm. I, I suppose it's – if he's there – at 55, he damn sure would be hard to uh, to, to to pass up at, at, at that point, right? But uh, uh, I just think just because the whole power five thing kind of dampens his chances to be uh, the, the the you know the guy at uh, 24. You're talking about uh, Collins, right? Right. Let's see if they're at his uh, Tulsa Pro Day. I don't know when that is off the top of my head, but um, that would be a, a, a date to circle. Right. 
All right, Dave. And then the one player the Steelers did retain in terms of re-signing was Zach Banner, offensive tackle. I know basically all of Steelers Nation and, and you and I were very, very confident Banner would return. It just the surprise here was the terms of which he returned on. And you can go through the contract there because that is the most notable aspect of the Zach Banner re-signing. Yeah, it really is. And, uh, I mean, it looked good for him, right? I mm-hmm. mean, uh, he – and what did – didn't I at one point I say if I'm Banner, I'm kind of holding the hand to the fire or fire a little bit there mm-hmm. and, and, and trying to negotiate myself a little better deal? Boy, his uh, – uh, and I, I forget who, who, who represents him, but uh, did, a, did a hell of a job there because uh, he's getting a 1.525 base salary in 2021, a uh, 3.25 sign, million signing bonus uh, in this as well, too. So his take home. Uh, with, 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 with signing bonus being a 3.25 million and, and, and the base salary being 1.5, I mean, that's, uh, that's what almost $5 million, right? Mm-hmm. And the total terms of the deal was two years, nine and a half million? 9.775 is what it okay. ended up being, uh, a uh, uh, total there. So for him to get nearly $5 million, uh, uh, after playing one game uh, last season and, and tearing up his knee in the process there for him to get that a, a, as a year one take after, after earning, what was it? 1.75 million in, mm-hmm. in, in, in 2020. I mean, that shows a, that team has a lot of confidence in that man, you know? Uh, and, I mean, good for him. I, I, I'm not saying we, we, we thought that he would get resigned and we thought it would either be a one year deal on a cheap again, or it'd be a two year deal that would keep his cap hit kind of low. Well, his cap hit comes in at 3.15 million at 2021. And I kind of envisioned it being a little bit lower than yeah. that, to be quite honest with you. Yeah, I did too. I thought it was going to be a one-year deal for for very cheap as kind of a prove-it type thing, but uh, that's not how the Steelers saw it. So, you know, it it still essentially is a one-year prove-it deal because if he doesn't work out this year, then they're just going to cut him, and the dead money hit I don't think is too bad for for next season. But what this tells you is, and it's obvious, he's going to start in 2021, whether that's left tackle or right tackle, I guess remains to be seen. My guess is left tackle as we sit here today. But um, he's going to be a starting tackle because they're going to pay him to try to prove it. And either it works out and they keep him for 2022 for uh, a pretty cheap tackle rate or it doesn't work out and you cut him. But you have to play him to to prove it. And so he's going to be a starting tackle. You know, in 2021, there's no doubt in my mind. Hey, mo- most definitely, you you don't pay a guy that 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 kind of money him not him not start now, right? Mm-hmm. You know, uh, right. the only question is side uh, that he's on. I. I kind of wonder if if they, they'll put him on the right side and then flip a core four over. But I mean, we're we're, we're you know we're splitting hairs when, when I think when it comes to that. But uh, he will be one of the two. How about that? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, look, and, 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 and this here's the other interesting aspect of it that that I that I threw out on Twitter yesterday too. At least you know you do get him locked up for two years there. So now you have him and a core four overlapping. By, by by one year because the core four was scheduled to be unrestricted free agent in 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 2022 had you just signed banner uh uh for, for, for one year he would have been unrestricted as well too then then you're kind of back in a a little bit of a deeper hole now we still mm-hmm. expect this team to draft a tackle right yes but probably not happening until day three ish by now i don't i don't think you can i don't i don't think you can slam dunk it that way I'm not slam dunking, but okay. What do you think? You you think first round still a possibility? I I, I think I think any round. I think first first you know first second third round is still very much open for discussion. Now, do I think it's going to be first round? No, but uh, I you know second you know I, I I every round is still open to me. I think when it comes to tackle, for the sheer fact that I mean, what's going to happen to a core four after this year? More than likely. After two thousand, uh, I mean, yeah, I know you're trying to get at. He probably walks. I mean, you're not gonna probably not gonna franchise tag him, right? I doubt it. All right, so you're not gonna extend him this off season, right? Right. I mean, I guess you could if you take a low enough deal, but he he'd be silly. He'd be okay. silly uh, too. So uh, a year from now, he's gonna be on that list of uh, 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 of unrestricted free agents. 
Yeah, no, I get your point. Yeah, it's it's possible. I mean, I'm saying maybe fourth round. You're saying maybe second round. I mean, it's there's a difference there, but it's not you know a, a world of difference. And it is a good tackle class overall, so that may compel this team to wait a little bit because the depth here, I think, overall is pretty impressive. Um, I just look at you know is running back going to be more important to tackle to them? Probably is center going to be more important to them than tackle probably? And you know is some other position going to end up being more important to them? Maybe as well. Um, and generally speaking, when you draft somebody the top three rounds, they're going to play out of the out of the gate uh to some extent and that's not going to happen right now so maybe i mean we'll see the draft is unpredictable but uh, i'll put it this way first round would surprise me right now we have a kevin colbert and mike tomlin sighting today to report oh where are they at georgia 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 all right no surprise there that is the uh big pro day today with what eric stokes and campbell and who else is it? yeah the edge guy the, the um, edge, edge guy all right, is so. this is this team gonna go defense in the first round? <laughs> like I, Ike Taylor, Ike Taylor, uh, Ike Taylor was on the radio I think last week and said, you know what they do? They go defense first round. You know, uh, not wrong. That's what they've done, uh, and, and I mean it, they've done it for how many straight years with with yeah, that? Seven since the Castro. Uh, so uh, uh, in, 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 interesting enough. So uh, they are at the Georgia Pro Day. So uh, we'll have to write that up here in in, in, in a little bit there. Uh, what what were we talking about before that? Yeah, just the tackle outlook. And just to go yeah. back to Banner, I mean, you know, it, it's not a lot of money in the grand scheme of things for a starting offensive lineman. There's just a lot of unknown with Zach Banner right now. Now, he's proven a lot of people wrong. You know, I'm sure most people thought he was going to fall out of the league a couple of years ago, and he's done a great job to work his way back up and be in this position. So congrats to him. But there's only been one game in his, in his NFL career where he's played more than 25 snaps, and that was week one last year when he tore his ACL. So you're just giving that money off of a pretty limited you know, Sunday resume. And as a, a one-game starter at offensive tackle, and now you're saying that he's our guy for at least this season, it's just it's a lot of gray area, and there's not a lot of information to really judge uh, Zach Banner right now. Right, I mean, and and I think uh, Matthew Bell wrote it up this morning. You know, it just shows a lot of trust, and, and the contract speaks that. Even though technically, yes, it's I mean, it's a one year deal, mm-hmm. but it, but if he if he hits that, uh, if he hits that second, it's hard to imagine him not playing the second year right now. Especially if you lose a guy like a core for next year, you know who's you know you you the pipeline's just not very full right now unless you get somebody uh, undrafted free agent or whatnot uh, and I'm sure they're gonna be looking high and high and low even if they draft somebody for for another one of those uh, 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 undrafted types here but uh, uh, long vision for Banner is he's playing for that franchise tag after the 2022 season is what he's playing for. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so we'll see how he does. But uh, the important thing is that Zach Banner is going to be a starting tackle uh, this season. And and we'll see how he does because, again, there just isn't a lot of information to go off right now to really judge how well he'll do. But this is a, it's a bit of a gamble for the Steelers. But as, as Matthew said, and as you said, there's a lot of trust there, obviously. Right. A little bit higher. Right, they- and once again, you know, a little bit higher cap charge. And, I mean, we're splitting hairs here. But, uh, you know. If you want to talk about a minor upset as far as surprise, it's really that that he got that kind of money uh, uh, in in year one, almost five million dollars in year one total. So that that that's the slight right. of upset in the whole situation. But good on him. Yeah. I mean, you got to get it when you yeah. can get it. Absolutely. Yeah. Never. I never begrudge any player uh, for getting getting paid. Uh, they they have to because that that window of getting paid is so short in the NFL. All right, Dave, with the losses, the Steelers have a short uh, comp update for them, according to Nick Corteva over the cap, Mike Hilton, kind of a borderline five or six round selection for the Steelers in 2022. Tyson Alu, 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 probably a six round comp pick value, although I doubt he'll factor in when all is said and done when you consider Juju or Villanueva still unsigned, but that is kind of your current lay of the land, a third for Dupree, a fifth for Filer, five or six for Hilton, and a six right now for Tyson Alu, Alu. Right, we'll see what happens uh, to be continued, right? Because uh, mm-hmm. they can only have what maximum of four comp picks. Is that right? And Correct. So hope you know if you lose any more, you would hope the value kind of climbs a little bit there uh, in, in, in total. And I, from where we sit right now, I don't see very much coming in on the balance sheet on the other side for the Steelers mm. uh, for the rest of the way out. That will uh, that will uh, offset much of what's happened on 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 the loss side of the column. I mean, heck, we still got Alejandro Villanueva. What's going to happen with Juju uh, to uh, to 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 go here? So. Uh, 
they're 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 stacking that you know compensatory pick value for sure. We kind of figured that that would be the case. Yeah, yeah, and uh, that's what's playing out right now. Dave, give us a quick cap update with all the moves this team has made. Where are they sitting at cap wise right now? Uh, absolutely, I can do that. And if you hold on, I will pull that up for you real, real quick here. And... As we know, after the banner signing, they only had a couple hundred thousand in space. They obviously released Vince to give themselves some extra breathing room. So I think they're in the three to four million dollar range right now in terms of cap space. Uh... Right now, they are, and look, we still don't know. We we think we know what the BJ Finney is. It's, it's going to be a minimum salary benefit deal. Just judging by those numbers, cheating off the numbers off of Jer- uh, of, of what uh, Field Yates posted. I'm I'm ninety nine point eight percent confident uh, that uh, that this is correct here. Uh, the Steelers are now three point nine seven five eight six under the cap after the release of Vince Williams and after the re-signing of Zach Banner and the re-signing of uh, Cameron Sutton. Uh, that number also includes that 792,000 uh, off-season workout placeholder charge that's going to hit uh, 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 very soon as well, too. So uh, almost $3.3 million under the cap. Uh, I, I check it every morning on the NFL PA, PA page. There was no update as far as uh, any restructures or anything like that hitting uh, either. So... Uh, for those of you trying to uh, hoping maybe they're that, you know going to free up some more cap room, it's not looking like they're going to do it. So I guess they're going to wait on to it until later this off season. Uh, yeah. I mean, look, they 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 got to do it. <laughs> Are you surprised they haven't done it yet? Uh, not, not that it's gotten this late. No. Uh, okay. uh now I I, I would have thought you know obviously earlier in the off season I thought there was a good chance that that was going to get done. Mm-hmm. Uh, but the longer that they wait, have waited, we understand why they did Derek Watt. They had to because he had a uh, roster bonus due uh, mm-hmm. uh, with, with a time stamp on it. Uh, uh, the same essentially goes for Cam Hayward, right, uh, uh, with, with, with him. Uh, the other guys, uh, Boswell and Tuitt, all depended on how they how, – if they wanted to spend in free agency or not. And, and, and re-sign some of their own. And I think at, at this point, it's quite obvious that their plan was to carve out a little bit of room for Cameron Sutton, and, 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 and we'll see what else they get, kind of these minimum salary maybe guys here. But it doesn't look like they have had have had plans. Now, could this change in the next 24 hours? Yeah, I mean, it, 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 it could. But uh, you just kind of would have thought that, if, 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 if you know, that to it, and uh, specifically, yeah, because you got, I mean, it's, it's $5.01 million for, for, for Tuit and, 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 and Boswell on full restructures. It doesn't seem like a lot, but when you only have three point whatever, you know, that, that they have right now, you know, that, that, that's, that's quite a bit on the pile. I would mm-hmm. think now that if they did, uh, do, uh, did do, uh, to it, it would be because they, they want to resign, uh, a guy like Juju. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I'm not expecting it at this point. Maybe it happens, but I mean, we're we're at the start of the new league year, and it hasn't happened, so um, it may not happen until you know later this off season. Right. So I mean, look, they're going to do to it. They have to do to it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I unless unless they get a lot of a lot of extensions done to clear out the money that way. I mean, you still got to ha- you know, you remember you guys still got to got to afford the uh, uh, the draft class, the practice squad. Uh, the, uh, you know, however much you're going to go into the season with probably around six to $8 million with, uh, they, they've, you know, they got, they've got to, uh, make, make room for that. And so the two restructures coming, it's just a matter of when. Mm-hmm. Right, right. Gotcha. All right, Dave, where to from here? I think, uh, we've, we've covered the, the, the bulk of the topics today. Uh, did we get, uh, uh, Dupree? Uh, what specifically? We talked about him yesterday, didn't we? Did we? Yeah, I mean, he signed on Monday night. Okay, I I, I just yeah. can't, the the day oh, yeah, something else on on Dupree. The, the, yeah, I just just I think I mean, do we uh the the contract numbers overall? I'm trying to think if we have what his cap charge is. Let me see if we got anything on that so far. Uh, no, yeah, I don't no, know. Not, not not nothing on that so far. Uh, and we obviously we, we talked about Sutton, right? I'm yeah, we the talked day, about the Sutton. days are running together here on me. <laughs> so in terms of outside free agents, obviously things are pretty quiet right now. 
I mean, I, I, we just know we had this conversation yesterday, but nose tackle kind of gets on the board now as a, as a potential need for this team. Still tight end, edge, um, anything else that this team could could look to address? I guess maybe slot receiver as well, assuming Juju walks. What's going on with this receiver market? It's uh, apparently the report is it's really soft out there. Yeah, and I uh, put up. Let me let me run some uh, run some figures by boy. If Emmanuel Sanders though can get six million dollars, uh, what does that say? Or does it does it say anything? Sometimes those one year deals can be a little bit difficult to gauge because it is just one season. Um, are you saying that's indicative of the market being softer or I mean, or if harder? I, mean, I, I know I'm saying it's it, to, to me. I do, would you would you have envisioned uh, uh, Emmanuel Sanders getting a one you know one year up to six million dollars? Well, it's up to six. Is it actually six? I, I, or I don't know if we have the specifics on yeah. that. In fact, I think it's like six million and maybe some change. I, I think the up to can possibly, from what I'm seeing out there, could possibly be six million and up to mm. you know something you know with some incentives and all in there. Yeah, I'd have to see some of the terms because some of these, these deals gets reported and they're bigger than they actually are, and you know, they get overinflated when when they're initially reported. Obviously, agent driven numbers there i don't know but the report is the, the wide receiver market at the top is soft and really the top three guys of this free agency class kenny galladay juju and curtis samuel have not signed and there hasn't been a lot of news on where those guys could land so um, maybe today is the day i thought you had pass rushers go on monday quarterbacks went yesterday maybe today is the day for receivers to go off the board but uh, the longer you wait the more you think maybe this market isn't quite as hot as a guy like juju hoped it would be all right, uh, Corey Davis, what, three years, 37 and a half. Nelson uh, mm-hmm. Aguilar, I mean, if Nelson can get two years, 26 million, I mean, what's your, I mean, I mean, where does Juju rank rank along those lines? Yeah, I mean, I would put Juju above. Two. Yeah, I would, I would put Juju above both of those guys, and I still think he will be, but a question, maybe it won't be, he won't be much further above those guys as we thought, or as some people have speculated, does he take a one-year deal and try again next year when the cap goes up, he'll still only be 25 years old, that I guess could be an option as well. What's the, what's a one-year deal uh, price amount look like for, for, for yeah. Juju though? It's a good question. I don't know. Eight 14, to 10, 10, 15? 14. I, I don't know. I mean, do you take a little bit less because... You know, it's harder for teams to give that one year deal at 14 million and put it all in in that you know one season. I, I'm not quite sure what that looks like, to be honest with you. I mean, there's no way. I mean, the, the, you know, the, the Steelers won't be the ones giving the one year deal. No, I mean, they, there's no way they could afford that. You know, and you know, I, I don't care how you try to carve out. Uh, you know, a lot of people say, "Oh, well, the Steelers can do it." There, there's ways to create cap space. Yeah, but you people forget that you have all this post March March 17th. Uh, cost that, that that come along here. I mean, <laughs> the only restructures you have left at this point are are are, are to it and Boswell, right? Correct. All right, and that's five million dollars. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, outside of extensions or flat out cuts, I mean, you don't have a way to create uh, create cap space at this point. You know. Right. And, yeah. There's no way you could fit that juju deal in. You know. So stop. Stop thinking that you're going to get. Uh, now look. Could could you do uh, uh, a five year with four 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 years voidable? But why why would you do something like that and set yourself up for uh, for uh, uh, dead, dead money? money? Yeah. Yeah. No. I, I can't see that being uh, the mechanism they go with. So we'll see. Uh, I don't know. You know what that market's going to look like, but you would imagine. These guys will start getting signed soon, next day or two. Uh, once the first shoe drops, you kind of know where that market's at, and the rest of the guys will, will, will fall in line, I would expect. Are we going to look back and just say that it, it, it just took a couple of days for the wide receiver market to uh, uh, to come about? It just, we'll see what the numbers are. If it comes in as we expected, then we'll just say, yeah, it just was slower developing as teams went other directions. If it comes in lighter, then you sit there and say it just never developed and, and guys had to settle. Where would you put Kenny Galladay in relation to 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 to, to Juju? Yeah, I mean, they're kind of different types of guys. I mean, Gondé's more of a, a Z-type jump ball player, um, and, and Juju's more of a possession slot receiver type of guy. So I, I, I've watched Juju more, so I'm biased. So I, maybe I would give the edge to Juju, but I think it just depends on the type of receiver you want for your offense. All right, uh, financial-wise, who, who, who are you paying more? I mean, again, I think they're in pretty similar situations. Um, I think they'll get comparable money. I, you could makes the argument Galdi gets paid more and that'd be fine. You can make the argument Juju gets paid more and I think that's acceptable as well. Who do you think ends up getting paid more? Mm, I'll go 
slight edge to Galladay, but uh, it could go either way. I'll give a slight edge to Juju on that. We, we I mean, you still think both those guys are over fifteen million though, but when the dust clears, right or no? I would think so, but the longer this thing waits, I mean, I guess it's only been two days, but that feels like an eternity in the NFL. Um, you start wondering a little bit, and you see some of these reports that you know GMs and players are saying this market is isn't as hot as as they thought it would be, as players hoped it would be. So you know, who knows? We'll find out. Is that just uh, GM talk to try to try yeah. to drive the price down? It could be. It could be. <laughs> I mean, we're sure, not even so. technically in the new year yet, right. you know. But it feels like free agency is almost half over because, like, we already know where many of the top names are going. So it, it, the NFL is weird in that sense. All right. Uh, uh, James Conner value. We saw who was it? Jamal Williams uh, uh, agreed to a deal last night somewhere around, uh, what, three to four million dollars a year. That, that's that got to be James Conner's value right now, right? Yeah, that sounds about right to me. I thought Jamal Williams got, what, two years, seven and a half to go with Detroit. Um, that sounds about what James Conner is going to get. And, you know, the pro football folk, uh, focus wrote six, six $6.6 million. I, I laughed at that when I saw that uh, uh, several weeks ago. And I, I envisioned it being about three to uh, four million dollars with James Conner. So I, I would expect that that to kind of be his payday here. And, and one would think probably within the next 48 48- I would think 48 hours, James Conner ought to have a new home. Maybe. I don't really know. I mean, I, I don't know when Conner's going to get signed, to be honest with you. I don't know who it's going to be. It's not going to be Miami. They've already signed Malcolm Brown, and they're, you know, they're probably going to go draft somebody. They could you know, take away Najee Harris or somebody at, eight, at number 18 in the draft. But uh, we'll see. I don't know where Conner's next home is going to be. Oh, Henry Villanueva, is he going to have a new home in the next 48 hours by the time we get back on this thing? Maybe. Uh, he's – Probably the best tackle on the board now that Trent Williams has, has signed. Um, I don't know who else would be out there as a, as a better offensive tackle than, than Villanueva. All right. Uh, and, and who else is left at the top of the uh, uh, the Steelers list there? Uh, Juju we talked about, Alejandro uh, we've talked about. Who, who, who's left on there? I think that the, those are the big names. It's it's them. It's it's James Conner, and then from there you get the drop off. I mean, the guys that are still unsigned are the lower level guys like Chris Wormley. Will he come back now that that Alu Alu's gone? That, that would probably be an important resigning. Uh, Jordan Berry, you know, potential starting punter, and uh, Jordan Dangerfield. Does Ola circle back? I mean, we get into the lower level names at that point, but those are the kind of the the names to now watch internally for Pittsburgh. We expect a couple of. Uh... You know what? Uh, I, can we talk about a very unpop before we close this thing out? A very probably uh, I don't know, maybe popular, unpopular take uh, on, on my end here would be, sure. uh, and, and you probably know which way I'm, I'm going with this. I I would I would cut Eric Ebron. In in but you said to do that, you would sign Juju to cut Ebron. I would use that cap savings to go towards a Juju contract. A mm-hmm. and. Then I would go rummage through the tight end pile and mm. get me a Jesse James and somebody else as a band aid uh, that that could maybe be a, a help you out in the receiving end of it. Uh, and boy, then I you know I, I might get two or three of those kind of guys if I could get them for the minimum, you know, and let let it mm-hmm. sort itself out there. And then also I would I would I would attempt to maybe address the position in the draft because if I re-signed Juju, I probably wouldn't need to draft a receiver this year. I would just I would just you know, earmark instead of a receiver position. Uh, mm-hmm. I, I I would I would earmark it maybe a tight end tight end around fourth round or something like that or or you know along those lines. But uh, you know no 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 disrespect to to Eric Ebron, but you know, he's not going to give you any – and we knew this. We, knew, we we told people this back when he was signed. He's not going to give you anything in, in the blocking department. We also mm-hmm. told him that he's going to be a liability when it comes to drops. That's the case. Is what he gives you in the other in – the, in, 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 in the 50 catches and, and the touchdowns enough to warrant – keeping him at that, you know, at his price, I guess. I, I just, I, I've, I've, I've kind of struggled with this and I just wanted to throw it out there because a lot of people say, well, Dave, you don't talk, um, uh, you know, you always talk about what the Steelers are going to do. Mm-hmm. You don't talk enough about what you would do. Not that it matters. Nobody gives a crap, but, uh, you know, it's not like Kevin Colbert's tuning in right now. So that's it. Hey, mm-hmm. pack, pack, pack up Ebron, uh, uh, you know, the, along those lines. But quite honestly, 
I and I know there's not a lot out there in free agency right now, or, or, or probably not going to be either. Uh, once the dust settles, I would seriously consider if if you thought you could get, uh, 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 especially if you could get Juju back on, let's say fifteen and a half, sixteen million dollars a year. And, and structure it the way you normally like to structure it and get his cap mm-hmm. number around 4.75 in, 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 in this first year here, uh, I would seriously consider about uh, about packing up Ebron out the door there, get, getting that cap savings there, and then uh, uh, just increase you know, the, the, the dumpster diving uh, when it came <laughs> to tight ends. Yeah, I'm with you. I mean, if you if you if I had the choice, are you between, really with me though? I mean, well, I mean, it's not going to happen. So you know, I just haven't even really thought about it from from that standpoint. But if you ask me, who would I rather have, Eric Ebron or Juju? It's Juju. He's the better player, and he's the younger player, and you'll have him here longer term because Ebron probably walks after this upcoming season. So I think it's kind of a no brainer from that standpoint. But obviously, I don't expect them to actually go with that route. I mean, what 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 does Ebron? bring you that maybe you I mean obviously the catches right but I mean the other stuff that goes along with it he's not gonna help you in a running game no he'll always be a weight in your mission to improve your run game I mean you can do that in other ways but there'll always be kind of an anchor of Ebron because he's still limiting in 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 a lot of ways and in some ways he can help you if you if you use him correctly on down blocks and leverage and angles but but obviously you're never going to have a great run blocking tight end if Ebron's playing you know 60 percent of the time I mean 56 catches for uh, look here's the thing if he if he stays which he probably is they got to find a way to use utilize him even better than they you know such like just like we said with if, if for some reason Juju was to come back they've got to find a way to utilize Eric Ebron a little better down the field not only down the field but in the red zone as well mm-hmm. yeah they do I agree and they better get him a blocking tight end in 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 the building you know uh, fairly soon, even if it is a guy like Jesse James. So that's been weighing on my heart. I feel a lot better mm-hmm. uh, uh, now getting that out there. A- any hot takes you want to end with? I have a pretty hot take today coming for my terrible take, which you guys can listen to. I compare the 2021 Steelers to the 2020 Patriots, where it's kind of your roster got gutted. Patriots had all, the, all those opt-out guys, and obviously they lost Tom Brady, and you kind of go into the next year the Patriots are right now with some money and you know some picks and kind of rebuild that way. I kind of feel like that's where the Steelers are at. Not obviously the Steelers haven't lost their quarterback the way the, the Patriots did, but they're in that kind of weird transitional phase. And I just kind of have that feeling maybe next year Steelers come out with some more money and a lot of comp picks too. And that's kind of when they try to rebuild and, and attack things. All right. We'll look forward to that uh, today at uh, five Eastern time, right? Yep. 5 PM terrible take every Monday through Friday. All right. Uh, with that, I guess we should call it a show there. About uh, about an hour into this one, we'll lighten it up on people. We're going to be back tomorrow, or what, what's today? Wednesday? Uh, yeah, we'll, come back Friday. Well, it sounds like we'll probably be back Friday unless anything drastic happens along those lines there. We'll come back on fr- Friday and recap everything. And by then, things should have really slowed down uh, by, by, by that point. So in the meantime, you can follow me on Twitter at Steeders Depot. You can follow Alex on Twitter at Alex underscore Kazora. Follow the show at Terrible Podcast. Email the show, theterriblepodcast at gmail.com. Do you like what we do? Uh, do you get value from it? If so, and you want to donate to the cause, go to steedersdepot.com, hit the donate button up right uh, navigational bar and you can make a secure tra- uh, uh, donation that way if you like also if you'd like an ad free version of the site go to studiosdepot.com hit the donate button up right navigational bar uh, and for $25 for one calendar year you can have an ad free version of the site uh, as well it's your choice it's been a very popular uh, choice Alex thank you we will get back at it uh, on Friday and as always thanks for listening to the terrible podcast with Dave and Alex